Hi, so today we're going to look at IV characteristics of a few components. This is part of a required practical, but it's a really great lesson because what it means is we can go through various different things that we've looked at over the past few lessons and really consolidate them, make sure we understand them and bring it all together. It's, it'd be great if we can do uh, the practical as well as go through the theory, but today I'll go through the theory with you and um, we'll bring together all the knowledge that we've been learning so far. So let's get on. So this is the specification, so it goes through all the bits that you need to know that we're going to go through today. So pause the video, have a little look. Okay, so there's quite a bit in the specification for today's lesson, so what we're going to do is go through it step by step, bring together previous lessons and hopefully really consolidate our knowledge of this. So we're going to start with some retrieval practice. So here we've got uh, some questions based on the things that we've done previously, so I want you to pause the video and have a go at these questions. If you're following along with the attached worksheet that's in the comments below or that's attached to your lesson, these questions are on the worksheet pause the video, have a little go at these questions. It's really important that you bring that knowledge to the forefront because this is the knowledge that you're gonna need during this lesson, okay? Okay, so throughout the lesson, hopefully I'll answer these questions if you struggled with any of them. The first bit that we're gonna be looking at today is we're gonna be talking about IV characteristics. What are IV characteristics? So first of all, what is I? I is current, remember? Current is measured in amps, it's a symbol for current. V is potential difference measured in volts. Okay and this is all about resistance. Remember resistance is measured in ohms which got a funny symbol like this and its uh, symbol is R. Can you remember the equation that links together these? The way I remember it is R. So V equals I R. So potential difference equals current times resistance. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. So we're going to be looking at it in relation to potential difference current graphs. So these are often called IV graphs or IV characteristics. So they notice they've got both a positive side of the graph and also a negative side of the graph because current and potential difference can be measured in positives and negatives okay first of all we're going to talk about a graph that goes through the origin okay a straight line graph that goes through the origin remembering that this here means origin here where zero zero would be okay 0, 0.0 so if we were plotting a graph that's where we would put our little cross and this should be a nice straight line okay this means that um, it is proportional, it's directly proportional. So any graph that is straight line like this, it's directly proportional. This kind of graph would be following Ohm's law. So go back through your notes, we talked about Ohm's law a couple of lessons ago. Go back through your notes, what is Ohm's law? Okay, this kind of graph would be following an um, Ohm's law and it would be called an ohmic conductor. And what that means is if the um, potential difference doubled, the current would double, okay? So let's have a look at that in relation to our equation. So V equals I times R, that we just talked about it before, potential difference equals current times resistance. If I rearrange that to give me resistance, it would give me a potential difference divided by the current, okay? So let me just put some numbers in there just to show you what I mean by if you double the potential difference, you'll double the current. If we um, did four for potential difference and current was two, our resistance, four divided by two, our resistance would be two. If I doubled both potential difference and the current, eight divided by four, my resistance would still be two, okay? So this is a, a resistor that's following Ohm's law, okay? It's an ohmic conductor, it's following Ohm's law. This graph shows it's directly proportional. Now, this is a resistor, symbol for a resistor, is like that. It is a resistor that the resistance is constant. So the resistance is constant, okay? Now, this only works when the temperature is uh, the same, okay? It has to be kept the same. So this is important. We're gonna talk a bit more about this later. Um, it only, the resistance will only remain uh, the same, remain constant when the temperature is constant as well. Okay, so we're just going to go through uh, a few more components. So the first component we just talked about was a 
ohmic resistor, an ohmic conductor, okay? So here we've got the graph. Now you need to know this graph shape. So this is for a resistor that is constant. Remember, it's got to be kept at a constant temperature. Now, the other graphs you need to know are this shape graph here. So again, we've got our IV, our current potential difference graph, same, but notice the shape of the graph. Now, this is for a filament bulb, okay, a filament lamp. Now, a filament lamp is a bit different to a resistor because what happens is the temperature will increase. If you've ever touched a bulb after it's been on for a while, the temperature will increase. So you can notice that the resistance will increase as the temperature increases. Okay, the more current that's going through the bulb, uh, the high, the hotter the, the bulb will be. So the greater the temperature, the resistance will increase. So that's why we get this shape here. The next one you need to know is the shape here. So you need to know the shape here, again, an IV graph. Uh, and this one is for our diode, okay? Now remember, this is our symbol for a diode. But what is a diode? A diode only allows current to flow in one direction. So you can see here, they've got a really high resistance here because we don't want the current to flow in that direction. So the current can only flow in this direction. So the current can only flow in this direction, which is why it only has um, a line on that side of the graph. There is a line here, but it's flat because of such high resistance, okay? So we only want the current to flow in one direction, the positive direction. Okay, so here, what about these components? So you need to know what these components are and you need to know what they mean and examples of their use. So this is a thermistor. I like to think of this as a hockey stick, an ice hockey stick, therm ice, so to help me think of it. So it's a resistor that is affected by temperature. The resistance decreases when the temperature increases. Okay, so the resistance decreases when the temperature increases. Can you think of any examples where uh, you want something to happen when there's an old, um, a temperature change? So for uh, so the example I'm thinking of is maybe in a boiler. So when the water starts to cool down, um, you want the boiler to automatically kick in, so then the boiler will start again and keep the hot water hot. It might be with a temperature thermostat for um, your radiators. So when there is a change in temperature, there's a change in the resistance, which means that you can program it for something to happen. So a thermistor would be used in anything that's a temperature controlled circuit. This symbol here is a LDR, a light dependent resistor. Okay, so what does that mean? It means, again, so this here is a light going into our resistor. It means that the resistance is affected by light, okay? And again, the resistance um, will go down when the light intensity goes up. Okay, so when the light intensity goes up, the resistance will go down. Okay, so can you think of an examples of a circuit where something might happen um, when there's an alteration in light? So it could be that you've got an outside light that comes on when it gets dark, maybe solar light. So when the light intensity changes, the resistance changes, and that can be programmed to make the lights come on when it gets dark. Okay, so you need to know how to um, set up a circuit to measure the potential difference and the current for these different components. So how would you go about doing that? So what do we need to know? We need to know the potential difference and the current. So what devices measure the potential difference and what devices measure the current? Okay, so potential difference, we need a voltmeter. Remember, that's always in parallel. And for current, we need an ammeter, always in series. So here's a circuit we've got here. So we've got our, um, our voltmeter measured in parallel, whereas we've got our ammeter in series. It's inside the circuit. Okay, so we put in our component here. So this would be what the component that we change. Okay, in this example, we've got a resistor. And we've also got this here. This is a variable resistor. Now, we want to measure the current potential difference characteristics. So what we need to do is alter the current and potential difference in order to measure the characteristics of it, to measure what will happen so that we can calculate resistance, so we can draw IV graphs. So how are we gonna measure? How are we gonna change the current and the potential difference? What we're gonna use is a variable resistor. By altering the resistance, we can change potential difference in the current in the circuit. We can um, note down the current and potential difference from our ammeter and our voltmeter, and we can draw graphs of that to see those shapes. Okay, so 
what is the problem with this investigation? So this is what we talked about um, at the beginning when we talked about the fact that the graph was directly proportional, that it had that diagonal line, but it only was like that if the temperature was kept the same. If the temperature changes, which will happen if you leave a circuit on for a long time, then what happens is the resistance increases. So you wouldn't get that perfectly straight, directionally proportion, directly proportional line. What you'll get is it will um, start to bend, start to look a bit more like a filament bulb, which isn't what we want for a resistor for a resistor that's a constant resistance so that happens because as the wire gets hotter the um, atoms inside it start to move making it harder for our electrons our current to flow through the flow of the charge through those wires would be harder which means it'll alter the resistance okay so how are we going to prevent that component from getting hot while we're testing it what you need to keep doing is keep turning that circuit off so when you're not getting those results turn it off to let it cool down because then you won't be changing the temperature and won't be affecting your results okay so that pretty much goes through all of the um lesson all of the lesson and at the very bottom there is an exam question that goes through this so remember think about the circuit think about what you're testing think about how the temperature would affect it you need to know those three shapes of those graphs so go through those three shapes of the graphs make sure you know which is a filament bulb which is a uh, diode and um, which is a ohmic conductor a, or a resistor at a constant resistance okay so i hope this has helped your lesson thanks very much